In November 2020, the United Arab Emirates announced a major overhaul of the country's Islamic laws. It allowed unmarried couples to live together and loosened alcohol restrictions. The modernization efforts were timed to Expo 2020, the mega global event hosted by Dubai aimed to bring in millions in investments and around 2.5 crore visitors. The Expo was slated from October 2020 till April 2021, but was postponed to October 2021 to March 2022 because of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, the broadening of personal freedoms reflects the changing profile of a Gulf nation billing itself as a prime destination for tourists and businesses despite its Islamic laws. The change also reflects the efforts of the ruling class to keep pace with a rapidly changing society at home. First, let me tell you about these reforms. Drinking alcohol has been decriminalized for those above 21 and penalties for purchase, transport or keeping alcohol at home without a license has been removed. Earlier, drinking without a license was a chargeable offense. Sharing of homes by unmarried couples has been legalized for the first time. Previously, it was illegal for an unmarried couple or even unrelated flatmates to share a home in the UAE. Although prosecutions in this category have been rare, the decriminalization is meant to attract more people to live in the country. Also for couples who were married in their home country but wanted to get a divorce in the UAE, the laws of the nation where the marriage took place would apply. On the matter of succession, legal courts could apply local Sharia law to divide assets among family members. Now the laws, as per a person's citizenship, will determine how assets are to be divided. However, property purchased in the UAE will continue to be administered according to the Sharia law. In a country where expats outnumber citizens nearly 9 to 1, the amendments will permit foreigners to avoid Islamic courts on issues such as marriage, divorce and inheritance, a key step in a nation where labor unions and political parties remain illegal. These announcements also came in the backdrop of a historic deal to normalize relations between the UAE and Israel allowing the influx of investments. Two other Muslim-majority nations, Bahrain and Sudan, formally established diplomatic ties with Israel in a deal brokered by the United States. UAE's Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Zayed, is seen as the man establishing peace between his country and Israel. Zayed had famously said that this deal is for Palestinians themselves, as outcomes together are far greater than the drawbacks. Adding that when he decided to head in this direction, he was looking forward to a level of cooperation that goes beyond peace. But the Palestinians have called this a betrayal of the Arab world. This historic accord saw conflicting responses. Many saw Bin Zayed as a peacemaker, while others said he was the complete opposite. 59-year-old Mohammed bin Zayed has been the UAE's leading figure for over a decade, shaping its education, finance, culture and foreign policies for years. He has never attended a United Nations Assembly. He doesn't go to Davos and rarely gives speeches. He remains a rare figure in the Middle East with his blueprint for the region's future. Despite his country's small size, he oversees more than $1.3 trillion in sovereign wealth funds and commands a military that is better equipped and trained than any in the region apart from Israel. The Pentagon regards him as a loyal and capable ally. Since 1971, when the UAE was founded on the North Arabian coast, it has mostly stayed out of the Arab world's conflicts. In 2013, Zayed decided to change his strategic outlook. The Arab Spring uprisings toppled several autocrats and Islamists were rising to fill the vacuum.
the UAE under the leadership of Mohammed bin Zayed took an aggressive stand against the ideological expansion of the region's foremost Islamic party, that is the Muslim Brotherhood. The affiliates of the Muslim Brotherhood had won elections in Egypt and Tunisia and jihadist militias were running rampant in Libya. Going against the radical ideologies of the Brotherhood, Abu Dhabi tacitly supported a coup in Egypt in 2013, which unseated the Brotherhood-backed government of Mohammed Morsi. In Libya in 2015, Mohammed bin Zayed stepped into the civil war. He fought the Shabab militia in Somalia, leveraging his country's commercial ports to become a power broker in the Horn of Africa. He also joined the Saudis in the war in Yemen to battle the Iran-backed Houthi militia. In June 2017, both the UAE and Saudi Arabia orchestrated a blockade against their GCC partner Qatar over Doha's support for the Muslim Brotherhood. All of this aimed at thwarting what he saw was a looming Islamist dominance. Let's rewind a little. Soon after the September 11 attacks, Mohammed bin Zayed undertook a review of the UAE's vulnerabilities to terrorist attacks. He formed a team of top advisors and his brothers to address key security issues. They began looking at ways to better monitor the UAE's sprawling trade and finance networks. This was aimed at deterring terrorists transiting via the Emirates and to eliminate the risk of attacks inside the country which was real. In 2005, the UAE foiled a triple car bombing at a five-star hotel. Mohammed bin Zayed simultaneously mounted a broader assault against the Islamist ideology. Many of UAE's religious groups belonged to Islah, a 1970s movement equivalent to the Muslim Brotherhood. Islah included thousands of foreigners, mostly from Egypt, who were welcomed decades ago to fill UAE's need for educationists and bureaucrats. By the 1990s, this group had emerged almost as a state within a state. In an audacious move, Mohammed bin Zayed ordered the sacking of these teachers and then went on to rewrite textbooks that were glorifying violent jihad. Emirati schools now offer ethics courses that are independent of religious study. Mohammed bin Zayed has made multiple efforts to push religion into the private realm. The UAE is today exporting its own brand of Islam via training programs of Imams. At the same time, Mohammed bin Zayed began harnessing Abu Dhabi's vast capital reserves to build a non-oil economy. Using a new sovereign wealth fund called Mubadala, he attracted new industries and created new job opportunities. He honed his progressive image by including women in his cabinet. Mubadala created an aerospace and aviation hub in Al Ain, where 86% of the workers are women. However, like all autocrats, Mohammed bin Zayed is also seen as inconsistent with his approach to human rights within his own country. The critics of the government are locked up and tortured in prisons. In 2018, Al Jazeera published a report saying that the UAE's efforts to spread peace within courts in the Middle East under bin Zayed included a network of clandestine prisons set up by the United Arab Emirates in Yemen, where brutal interrogation techniques, including physical and psychological torture, are used against prisoners. Last year, when the Taliban took control of Afghanistan, a fundamental shift in the leaderships of Riyadh and Abu Dhabi was evident. Saudi Arabia, which was so far looking into Afghanistan from a strong theological lens, specifically from the perspective of Riyadh's influence in Pakistan and attempts to expand the same into Afghanistan, maintained distance from the negotiations in Doha. These changes taking place in the Gulf power centers is a stark contrast to the kind of support they mobilized during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. The UAE had then maintained a small military presence in Afghanistan since 2003 on the sidelines of the post 9-11 US invasion and Washington DC's larger war on terror. 
In 2012, Saudi Arabia was looking to expand the funding of Islamic institutions in Afghanistan for a stronger footprint in the country as it stabilized under the U.S. security umbrella. In January, two Indians and a Pakistani national working for the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company died after three petrol tanks exploded near a storage facility near Abu Dhabi airport. The UAE termed it as the first deadly assault on its soil as Yemen's Houthi rebels claimed responsibility. The United Arab Emirates is part of a Saudi-led military coalition that supports Yemen's government against the Iran-aligned Houthi rebels who have repeatedly targeted Saudi Arabia with cross-border attacks. The terror strike exposed the challenges before the Zayed administration. Few days later, on January 24th, two ballistic missiles fired by the same Houthi terror group towards Abu Dhabi were intercepted and destroyed. In the neighborhood, keeping pace with his mentor Mohammed bin Zayed, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia has ordered mosques to lower the volumes of speakers and switch them off after the call for prayers. Rules regarding mandatory closing of shops and businesses during prayer time have been relaxed as well. And the infamous Saudi religious police has been reined in, moving into an advisory role rather than one that admonishes people publicly for breaking religious etiquettes.